Okay, uh, moving on to uh, game number 10 uh, with the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the motivation this week, uh, obviously, uh, continue to move forward. Uh, you know, getting on the winning track has been good, been good for our team, uh, good for our confidence. Um, you know, with that, uh, he, human instinct is to kind of relax a little bit. So we got to be on guard for that. Uh, you know, we got to go get a road win. I think that's important. Um, haven't, haven't won on the road yet this year. We're 0-3. <clears throat> Last year we were 4-1 on the road. So uh, we're, we're confident, this, this team's confident that, that we can go win on the road. Our plan that we have in place uh, has, has proven to be successful with that. So go get a win on the road is important. Uh, and, and, yes, try to get to win six is important. You know, you, five plus one is six. For those of you that don't know that, so it's important to get to six. That that happens to be the magic number <clears throat> when in talking about bowl eligibility. It's everybody's team to get bowl eligibility. You know, it's 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 everybody's goal to to get bowl eligibility. So uh, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, you know, have another opportunity to get out there and play a Big Twelve football game is 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 good. So um, you know. Probably we'll mention what happened two years ago, you know, at Kansas. Uh, you know, I think we're a completely different team. Um, you know, they, they have a different team. We, we, we are a different team. But, uh, you know, we've made a lot about our 20 seniors that have been here for four years in the Big 12. Um, you know, weren't successful in Lawrence, Kansas uh, two years ago. Uh, so it's something that, that – that we, we will talk about a little bit. Uh, it's my job to make sure that they understand the situation that they're in. So for those for those who, uh, who who didn't make that trip, you know, I'm going to explain to them what it's going to be like. And then I know a lot of the guys in the room, uh, down in the locker room, will explain to them what it's going to be like. <clears throat> uh, offensively, you know, Kansas. I, the, the one thing I say about Kansas, that all three sides. If you go on and you look at their video. You know they 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 haven't won yet this year. They're they're in a complete rebuilding mode. Uh, David Beatty's a good football coach. He's going to get it going there. It's it's going to take a little bit of time, but uh, he's a great recruiter and and he's going to continue to get talent uh, to Kansas and continue to get better. You can ar you already see that being the case. Uh, playing a lot of young guys, a lot of inexperienced guys. Um, you know, so that that makes it kind of tough to win in the Big Twelve. There's no question. Um, uh, but the one thing that you can see when you put on all three phases of their game is their kids play their tail off. I mean, that, the effort that they play with is, is very, very apparent. And you can see that on video, that they play hard and it doesn't matter first quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Uh, they play their tail off. Their schemes are good. They, they you know, offensively, they're, they're, they're pretty similar to us. Their OC, Rob Likens, came from Cal. Uh, which runs a similar style of offense that we do. Uh, Coach Beatty came from Texas A&M, which obviously runs a very similar style of offense that, that we do. So they, they look very similar to us. They're about 50-50 run pass. Uh, they're going to get into multiple sets. Uh, they got a freshman quarterback that's continuously getting better that does a good job of throwing the football. Uh, and they got some good backs that run hard. So, you know, the, the, it's not, it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. These guys are – are getting better and they play with great effort. Uh, defensively, uh, you, you know, if you remember what I said last year about Clint Bowen, same thing is 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 true 100 percent this year. I think he's one of the better defensive coordinators in the country. Uh, their scheme is good. Their players are are, are technically sound. Uh, they they play with great effort. They're never out of position. Um, they they've played well. Uh, in spurts defensively, <clears throat> and the one thing that you when you look at it, you 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 know you you, you want to look at it when you see some of these numbers and the stats that they've been put in, situations that they've been put in. You you look at it and and you don't think it's going to look good, but I tell you, you put it on and it's looked good for ten straight games. They've gotten better, <clears throat> and again, they're playing with a lot of guys that are new, and and they're continuously getting better. So, I think last week against uh, TCU shows exactly what I'm saying. Uh, they played TCU hard. They played them tough. They had a chance to win that game. TCU is a good football team. That's won 17 out of the last 10, 18 games. So uh, that shows that Kansas is getting better, you know, and, and they're going to give us uh, everything that we want.
So with that, we'll take some questions. Dana, you uh, kind of mentioned that they're in a rebuilding mode. Uh, Coach Beauty, he actually faced a pretty significant shortfall in the scholarship department. I think it was like 65 he had when he came into the job. As someone who knows, you know, what it takes to assemble a roster, what kind of challenge is that, you know, being behind the eight ball in terms of scholarship players, and how would you address it if you were in a similar situation? Well, you just, you, you know, it's not, it's not something that's going to get fixed overnight. Uh, you know, never, never, you know, we were in the 60s when I was, you know, several years ago here too, and, and you, know, you can't use it as, as an excuse. You know, you got to, you got to, <clears throat> put guys in position to get out there and play and get out there and play. Your frontline guys can be fine. It's the depth issue that gets you. That's where it gets you. And over the course of a season, over the course of a game, when guys get hurt, you're plugging guys in that, that you know, they're, they're either not good enough to play or they're not ready to play yet, you know, for whatever reason. And um, that, that's, that's really where it gets you. And, and what I've seen is over – you know, the past three, four years, you know, our backups that go in, our special teams guys that are consisting of backups are able to play at a much higher level. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I, I know what he's going through. He, he's uh, he's going to do a good job. He's a recruiting machine, so he's going to get out there and recruit hard. And, and over the course of, of three and four years, you got to sign the maximum number of people that you can sign. They have to qualify, and then you need retention as well. Daniel, with the run game you have now, how important is it that you keep a deep ball presence? Obviously, Javon, Javon the other day, but to keep defenses spread out, do you have to have that? <clears throat> well, you do, but uh, what kind of what we've seen is because we have a deep ball presence and because we can run the ball, it's the intermediate stuff that they're giving you. So, you know, of the 10 passes that we completed, uh, the tw of uh, the twelve passes that we attempted, you know, only one of them was really a shot. Okay, if you go back and look at uh, <clears throat> at TCU and Texas Tech played us just like uh, Kansas or uh, just like Texas played us. Uh, TCU, we had those shots, which is why we were taking shots left and right. If they take away numbers in the run game and don't play people way off. We're going to take shot after shot after shot, and we have guys that can be successful when it comes to that. But if they're playing everybody back, 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 and taking away the run, then you got to do a good job with the intermediate passing game. I thought we did a good job of that last week. You know, you can say, well, you only threw for 120 yards. Well, that's 12 yards in attempt, and, and over 90% of those throws were intermediate passes. So... You know that that that's what we got to continue to do. It's it's all about just looking at what their plan is and what they're giving you, and trying to get uh, in the right play to be able to be successful. Do you think that the lack of those deep shots is a part of uh, is is maybe part of the reason why uh, why why the past two games that uh, that we really hadn't seen Shelton Gibson do quite as much offensively? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's the biggest reason. But uh, Shelton will be the first to tell you that he's got a. <laughs> work hard and right place, right time, you know, and, and, you know, get open underneath and not just, not just deep shots, but get open underneath. Let's say this about Shelton though. If he, if he's not being productive in the past game, he's going to find something else to do. And you saw him on, on one of those kickoffs, I mean, come down and knock the heck out of one of those returners. So <clears throat> if he can't do that in the past game, then he'll try to do it in the, in the return game or on the, the, the coverage units as well. I think Shelton's very valuable to us, and, and, and we'll find something for him to do. Dave, you've mentioned, assume somewhat jokingly, about Wendell not being able to score many touchdowns. Uh, That's really not a joke. <laughs> well, it's just a fact. Right. Yeah. How do you rush for 12 yards of carry and not well, that, score? That what needs to happen for him to get in the end zone more? Is it something he's doing? Is it uh, downfield blocking? <clears throat> I thought it was me not showing him where the end zone was, but I showed him that about 10 days ago. We went out at practice, and I explained to him what that line was where the turf changes color. And so he can't blame it on me. I don't know. We give it to him a bunch. We open up holes that are as big as this, this, this you know, as, as big as this uh, screen, uh, he gets from point A to point B, which is about 12 yards as fast as anybody I've ever seen. The rest of it's up to him. 
So it's more so about him making people miss. I was just wondering if the receivers. I think receivers, receivers are doing a good job downfield blocking. Uh, you know, especially this past week. Now that hadn't been the case all the time; it never will be. But I think this past week, I thought our receivers did a good job downfield. Maybe it has to do with Texas having really good athletes and closing the gap and making tackles. Uh, we did that a few about three weeks ago. We did. That wasn't for that wasn't for the run game. That was for another reason. <laughs> By no means am I selling Wendell short. He is our guy. He's as good of a running back as I've ever been around. I mean, he's got confidence. He's reading blocks. He's he's getting through there as quick as anybody I've ever seen. I, I don't know. Why hasn't he taken one 60 yards to the house? I don't know. I'm sure he don't know either. <clears throat> Maybe it has something to do with playing some good teams that have good athletes that close the gap pretty quick. Is Yadney still day to day, or is he maybe going to shut down for a while? Or no, nah, he's not shut down yet. I'd tell you if he was. I'd tell you if he was. He's not shut down yet. He he's probably going to see a little practice time for the first time. He did not last week. We'll probably see some practice time this week, and then we'll see how that looks. Speaking of talented or athletic defenders, what have you seen on film of this uh, Fish Smithson for? Yeah, he, he's, he's a good player. He's a new guy, junior college guy, came in from California. He's, he stands out. I mean, he's leading the Big 12 in tackles. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think you'd probably rather have your linebacker lead the team in tackles. But, uh, he, but he is. He's a good player. He shows up. He's got a couple of interceptions and, and looks athletic when the ball's in the air. He, he's, he's, he turns your head. He turns your head. So, you know, and it's, it's hard to do that as a first-year player. So give him credit for being able to adjust really quick and and uh, make make the plays that he's made. <clears throat> Coach, when you look at the way Karan's come on in recent weeks and you think back to the other players you've gotten out of Lackawanna, like Kevin, Mark Lewinsky, how important has that connection become for you guys over the past few years? Huge. It's been big. <clears throat> uh, Coach Duda does a great job up there. I mean, they won a ton of games again this year. So that, that's, you know, Dayron Wilson came from there as well. You know, uh, Wolf, you could probably name two or three more that come from that, 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 that direction. Glowinski's obviously a great player, Kevin. <clears throat> and Karan's doing some good things as well, too. So, um, you know, he does a great job up there, and we're always looking for, for guys to be able to help. You know, you talked about turning to the run game for a couple years now. Look a couple years ahead. What what kind of offense do you envision? I mean, what you see now, pass game 50-50, 60-40, what, what is it? I think, I think in a perfect world, uh, I, 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 and I made reference to this, I believe, to Tony on the radio show last week, that I'd, I'd much rather be in this situation right now than the other way. You know, you know we, we can run the ball as good as anybody I've, I've been around, okay, in, any team that I've been around. Um, we're, we're, we're still, I mean, we, we, we have a chance to do good things pass game wise. We've, we've proven to where if we couldn't throw the ball, we wouldn't have won that game last week. So we, we've proven to where we can make those throws and make those catches. And <clears throat> I'm pretty confident in, in the scheme that we do. I think that's been proven over the last two decades to be, to be successful. I think in a perfect world, you're, you're about a 50-50 team, and if the defense is taking away one, then you can effectively attack that defense with the other. It's harder to get in the position that we're in right now with the mindset of being able to run the football than it is to be able to flip a switch and, and get that mindset from your team um, you know, overnight. Or, or if, they're, if, they're, if they're giving you the pass and the conditions are, are not allowing you to be able to throw it the way that you want to throw it, you can't just flip a switch and be able to have that, that mindset uh, to be able to run the ball. What about the 2013 game specifically might you revisit with uh, players too? What year is that? The loss in Kansas. Yeah, uh, yeah I already mentioned that it'll get brought up. I think that's all I really need to say about it. <clears throat> You're talking run and, run and pass on Saturday. He threw the ball 12 times and won a game. Mike Leach threw it 57 and pulled off a win. I mean, is 
is there no really right way or is there one way better than the other? Or The right way is whatever you did in order to get the win, I think is the appropriate way to be able to phrase that. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I, whatever you got to do to win, that, that's what I've resigned to do. <clears throat> so I, I could have been worried about stats and done something to screw that game up pretty easily. For the last two weeks, I could have done that. So, you know, we'll, we'll come up with the game plan. I think our offensive coaches are doing a good job of coming up with a game plan that fits our personnel. Um, you know, getting these guys to understand what we got to do to move the ball, get first downs, get enough points to win, manage the game the appropriate way, whatever that means. You know, go fast, go slow, huddle, don't huddle, uh, whatever it is, uh, do what we got to do to finish the game and, and, and add one victory into the win category. So I've been on that other side too, you know, where we've, we've thrown the ball 60, 70 times and won. And that's what it took to win, and that's what we did. Uh, what kind of difference uh, uh, had, uh, had made it be seen, Danny, you, you know, for, uh, you know for, uh, uh, from an emotional, from, from a psychological standpoint in this team, from uh, where they were maybe two weeks ago coming off those four losses to, uh, to where they are now where you guys have kind of rebounded? Not a whole lot different, to be honest with you. I mean, our, our team is, is still the same. <clears throat> I think we've played hard. Uh, all, all year, I think we've practiced well all year. You know, even even leading into those those games after that four game stretch, our guys still practiced hard, played hard, and I, I had no doubt that they would go out and continue to do that. So not not a whole lot. It's just it's a little easier to refocus your guys. Um, you know, from a, 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 a eliminating doubt or you know capitalizing on confidence. You know, after a win than it is after a few losses. There's no doubt about that. But I, 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 I think this team is is motivated, and it means a lot to them. And it starts with those 20 seniors. Uh, to whatever the situation is, they will attack it head on and do their best. And in the offseason, we talk a lot about forcing turnovers, the importance of it. That being said, did you envision it going this well this year? You guys have forced so, a number so far. This year. Yeah, we're we're at the, I, with that said, we're still only like third in the league in turnover margin. So offensively, we need to focus hard, and as much as we focused on 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 you know getting turnovers and forcing turnovers and you know hoping and and thinking that good things will happen to you, I think that's the key in getting turnovers. And then the same thing, we've worked equally as hard at at, at protecting the ball and focusing on that. Um, I believe we've got nine picks and six fumbles, if I'm not mistaken. So <clears throat> you got to keep you got to keep focusing on it, you know. And, and um, we will. So all that, what have we done? I ain't telling you, but we're going to continue to do it, and and hopefully it will help us win the next few games. What does uh, what does Wellman do for the mental attitude of this team? Yeah, just tough, just tough. Uh, West Virginia kid. You know, means a lot to him to be a Mountaineer. Uh, <clears throat> you know, grew up wearing the blue and gold. Um, has that kind of mentality. You know, blue collar, hard worker, tough. Do what you got to do in order to make it work. Um, he's becoming very valuable to what we're doing offensively. He he wasn't able to do this a year ago as a as a redshirt freshman. Uh, he he's improved to the point to where a couple things have happened. One one he's He's a he's the main guy in the backfield, the lead blocker, the fullback. It's allowed Cody Clay. That Cody Clay's been that guy for three years. Well, now Cody can go be a tight end to get, get us an extra gap up front. <clears throat> and Cody's improved his game. You don't see it because he's just like one of the offensive linemen, pretty much. But uh, he's allowed Cody to do good things up on on the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, Eli being the lead blocker, he's he's. He's getting after people pretty good, and 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 now the and, you know the element to sneak him in the flat and throw it to him. We've talked about that. <laughs> he's good at that, and and now we're starting to hand it to him. So, so he he's becoming very valuable with what we're doing. That's why he's the player of the week last week. With uh, with with Daryl, he's made a couple of big plays for you guys in the past two weeks, but struggled I guess a little bit during the month of October. Did you see his confidence ever waver? And- 
Well, that, you, you go up against some of those guys he went up against. I mean, all the three of the guys he went up against are all up for the Blitnikoff right now. <clears throat> so those those guys are really good. And any I don't care who you are at corner, you go up against those guys, you're going to get beat at times. So it, you know, he, he did. He was battling through an injury, and he came back. And, you know, that, that happens. A good corner has got to have a short memory because they're going to get beat. And, and uh, Dar Daryl has bounced back and played really, really good the last two weeks. Danny, you happy with the pass rush? Uh, it seems like Noble's had some pretty big games his last two. Yeah, better. It is. It's better. It's better than it, ha it's better than it has been in the you know, last few years. So Noble's doing good, uh, and again, Gibby's doing a good job of scheming some things up. <clears throat> we can't just rush three all the time. So he's doing a good job of scheming some things up, getting some of these backers and safeties there as well. That, 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 should, be, you know, that should be a key moving forward for the remainder of the year. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you.